Wen Jin Wu. I'm a senior investigator at the FDA. And thank you very much for inviting me and, and for such a nice international um, program. So I appreciate it. So um, as a talk for my uh, presentation is a TDM1 resistance and HER2 heterogeneity. So this is the disclaimer. So uh, today, uh, you know, I'm going to focus on a uh, antibodies. So probably you already know it, the trastuzumab is another name for trastuzumab is a receptin. So it was approved a long time ago in 1998 to treat HER2 positive breast cancer. Right. So, but the when 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 breast cancer, the HER2 positive breast cancer treated by those antibodies, they could become a resistance um, by the cancers. Right. So. When become a resistance, another drug was approved by FDA they called it TDM1. So another name for TDM1 is adotrastuzumab amatensin. It's an antibody drug conjugates. So I'm going to focus on this, uh, this product or this uh, drug. So the antibody drug conjugates, so they have the consistent of a antibodies, monoclonal antibody. In this case, uh, is Herceptin or trastuzumab. That conjugated with a drug of the DM1, which is a microtubules inhibitors. So those microtubules inhibitors conjugated to the antibody and form a one single molecule through a link. So in this case, we call tile is a link. So the many different linkers that can, can, can bring those two molecules together, right? But in this case, they use tile is a linkers. So the TDM1 are used to treat a Herceptin resistant disease or metastatic breast cancers, but of course HER2 positive. So now there are you know, many different trials uh, with TDM1 that treat a different type, you know, different um, um, the stage of uh, HER2 positive breast cancers. However, so uh, many clinical issues as well. So today I'm going to focus on drug resistant to TDM1. So that any drug you treat um, to the patients, uh, they become the resistant to the drug eventually. So on this slide, just give you uh, some ideas about how antibody drug conjugate works. So this, in this case, I, you know, because we focus on the TDM1, right? So the good part for a transducemab resistant disease is that the HER2 expression is still there. So in other words, so you still can use HER2 as target. And um, then you can use a TDM1 because a TDM1, uh, the antibody portion is a transducemab. You have to have targets expressed on the tumors, right? So when the TDM1 binds to HER2, so the whole complex, HER2 and the TDM1 whole complex, the, the endocytosis by the tumor cells, right? So then, uh, you know, following uh, endocytic pathways, they uh, eventually end up with the lysosomes. And within the lysosomes, antibody approaching in this case, because the type is a linker, it's not hydrolyzable. And many other uh, linkers can be hydrolyzed, right? But in this case, antibody parts has to be degraded. So then the DM1, being released into the cytosol. So where they can find a target or a binding site, which is a microtubules. So as you know it, when the drug binds to the microtubules, cell cycle division, it could be host held, right? So the cell can undergo apoptosis. Because since in this case, since TDM1 uh, consists of trastuzumab, trastuzumab itself has activity to the tumor cells. So the TDM1 also retain antibody activity. They still can bind her to then block her to mediated activity or the tumor genic activity. So an, an, another activity for the TDM1 is an antibody you know, dependent cytotoxicity. So that is through a um, FC portion. So that FC portion is going to bring in the NK cells, nitric kill cells. So that is going to start, you know, when, the, when there's two cells together, so they can kill the tumor cells. So what is, you know, the TDM1 resistance? So a TDM1, you know, the, in general, when patients initially exposed to TDM1, 
most patients is a pretty you know the sensitive to the TDM1 treatment. However, so after a few months or maybe longer than a few months, half a year, the patients become to the resistant to this molecules. Right? Although the initial initial response is a pretty pretty good actually. So, but the mechanism, the how the, the 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 tumor cells become resistant to TDM1, and you know we still fully understand. But although a number of paper published, so today I'm not talk about um, this, but we're gonna focus on our data. So, um, to understand how the TDM1 become resistant to the tumor cells, right? So we we take a uh, the the cancer cells called GMT1. So this tumor cancer cells was initially derived from a HER2 positive patients that resistant to perceptin or trastuzumab. So we chron chronically expose this, a, the breast cancer cells with a different dose of TDM1, right? So after a, another probably three months, sometimes longer, so with those escalation, so cell eventually become uh, resistant to the TDM1. So similar to many other, you know, uh, laboratory, they, they try to generate resistant cell lines, kind of chronically exposed to the lower dose, then we, with a ex escalation of the, the drug. You know, say the, the cells eventually uh, adapt to the resistant status. So this slide uh, basically just tell you that so those cells um, that become resistant to the TDM1. Now figure A, as you can see um, right here, the growth the, at similar rate as compared with uh, parental cells. Well, as a parental cells, once exposed to TDM1, the, the growth pretty much eliminated. So uh, figure B, you can see from there that the TDM1 resistant cells are still able to grow in the soft agar. So then next we were wondering, so why the TDM1, those cells, you know, the, the GMT1 cells become resistant. So then so the first stage, first step, we tried looking for on whether or not the resistant cells lose the targets. Right? So in this case, as you can see from figure A, so TDM1 resistant cells pretty much H2 expression. H2, remember, is a target of DM1. So you, you're missing H2 in the TDM1 resistant cells. This is a very important because uh, you, you have no H2 expressed it. And then uh, you have no H2 target therapy could be used in the future when become resistant to the TDM1, right? So on the figure B, you can see that from uh, immunofluorescence, uh, this paper published recently, um, you don't see HER2 expressed in the TDM1 resistant cells. So on this cells, this A slide basically uh, tells you that. So um, I, showed, I, I showed you the, the growth, you know, become it, it resistant to the drug. So then we're wondering uh, what's going on with the other um, activity, for example, cell invasion activity, because so many resistant diseases, you can see metastatic uh, tumors uh, in the patients. So then we're wondering whether or not those resistant cells become more uh, invasive. Uh, so this uh, set of data tells you that. So when cells become resistant to TDM1, the invasion activity is increased. So, um, so this is kind of a logical. Um, so, it, it, you know, we just is following logical thinking. We carry out those experiments. So then, so the many uh, you know, set of data and were in the paper, but not showing today. But interestingly, so we find that um, the TDM1 resistant cells, their morphology changes. Those that specific morphological change linked with fibronectin. So as we know that fibrinagidin um, is a bond, bond to the integrin, right, which cells usually express as molecules. So then we're wondering, is this increased invasive activity could it possible to link it to the integrin molecules? 
Now the first step, we want to just check a alpha five beta one integrins because the, the common integrins is very heavily studied. Uh, some company uh, sponsors, um, you know, can use this one as target to treat cancers. So on um, our initial screening, we find it very interesting. So we find that alpha five beta one integrin actually is interested. So, so then, okay, so that's what we were thinking at that point that, okay, so the, the increased invasion activity could potentially relate it to uh, integral molecules that they upregulate in the resistance cells. So next, so when we locking down, the question is, we got a beta integral upregulated. What happened if we locking down the beta integral? What happened to that, right? So um, this very interesting finding um, where we were very much surprised. So when we're locking down the beta-1 integral molecules, so two different things are happening. One, the growth, uh, in, 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 as shown in the figure B, the growth is inhibited. You know, we can see the significance. However, so when we're locking down beta-1 integral, the invasion activity is increased. So it looks like this is in growth and the invasion regulated by different mechanisms. Both activity are associated with the integral molecules. So then we were wondering why the beta-1 integral locking down can increase the cell invasion activity, right? So are there any other integral also play role behind this integral locking down that's increased a um, you know, um, the cell invasion activity. So in the figure A, as you can see that another very heavily studied integral molecules called alpha V integrins, which is in, in, implicated as a, a molecule, molecule to regulate metastatic activity. So when we are logging down beta-1 integrins, as you can see uh, from a figure B, so alpha V integrins is upregulated. So then now we find a clue. Okay, you got alpha V integrin upregulated. Because alpha V integrin, when alpha V integrin are upregulated, it could potentially a complex with another integrin called beta 3. So it did not show right here. So, so then that could become more important for the tumor cells that mediate cancer metastasis. So, so this slide shows that. So the invasion activity induced by beta-1 locking down, as you can see from the black uh, columns, so very much increased in the invasion activity when you're locking down beta-1. However, so this enhanced invasion activity can be inhibited by the lock in, lock, locking down alpha-V. So, which means that, so our, from our Western blood data that are coordinated so you have beta one locking down, you got to enhance the invasion activity, right? So, however, in general, however, when you are locking down alpha V in your brain, and those invasion activity is dramatically reduced. So then we are question about um, what happened to EGF receptor because as early on I showed the slides, um, the HER2 expression is a pretty much eliminated in TDM1 resistant cells. So because the HER2 and the EGFR, they're the same family, right? So the, 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 the singling paths we regulated at this, by these two pathways, the, somehow they're coordinated. So one down regulate, another one could potentially upper regulate in this case. So we want to know what's going on with the EGFR singling pathways. So the first panel, upper panel, it shows the uh, the, a number of uh, different kinase, uh, receptor kinase, as you can see, is origin rec orange uh, rectangular. And each every receptor is upregulated in TDM1 resistant cells. And the bottom panel, so Western Bar shows that at least two phosphotyrosine phosphorylation sites is shown right here. So the EGFR phosphorylation, that's often associated with EGF receptor activity is upregulated. Again, 
the each every step of the expression is upregulated in the TDM1 resistant cells. So now, so what happened if we inhibit each every receptor? Right in this case, so beta one logging down increased invasion activity can be down regulated by EGFR targeting the antibody. In this case, it's a tuximab that binds to uh, domain two of EGF receptor extracellular domain that the block the EGF receptor dimerization. And another one, erntinib, is a kinase inhibitor for the EGF receptor. As you can see from slides, one the blue, one the red, the invasion activity is reduced. So then those TDM1 cells appear to be more sensitive to kinase uh, inhibitor. So our interpretation for this data was that because the uh, TDM1 resistant cell, they got more EGF receptor over expressed it, they'd be more addictive to uh, EGF signaling. So if you inhibit the EGF receptor, so then the growth uh, would be dramatically reduced. So this is a, kind of a quick working model. So uh, many data, is, data sets I'm not showing right here. So uh, if, if I can walk, walk in this model with you. So when we have a HER2 downregulated, as you can see the red arrow, because it becomes resistant, we, we have a cell chronically exposed to the HER2 target therapy, which is a TDM1, right? The HER2 downregulated, we had a um, EGF receptor upregulated. So the, in those TDM1, those HER2 downregulation converts TDM1 resistance, but we got a EGF receptor upregulated. So we got an integrated molecules upregulated. That doesn't mean that it could significantly increase the cell invasion activity, but when you're logging down beta-1 integrin, so you have a alpha V integrin upregulated together with a EGF receptor signaling, as you can see from the slides, uh, slides from I just showed you, the cell invasion activity is increased. So now I'm gonna uh, switch a gear a little bit on a few slides. I um, just want to discuss what, uh, what is a heterogeneous, uh, what heterogeneity with HER2 positive breast cancers. Right? So uh, we have intertumor uh, heterogeneity. So in this case, we'll talk about intertumor HER2 heterogeneity. So which means that, so um, when, you, when you have HER2 positive breast cancer, that's very important to guide a uh, therapy, right? You have to have a patient has to show the, in, the, in the slides, in a in the, in the tumor slides, you can show that HER2 positive overexpressed, that being diagnosed by a pathologist. So HER2 positive doesn't mean that when you have a we cut a section, as all tumor cells, HER2 is positive. Some HER2, we had a, a collaboration with a, a MD Anderson. So um, we have a, a, they have a lot of tissue samples, the cancer samples. So when you cut in sections, somewhere you got a HER2 very much overexpressed. Somewhere maybe tumor not even um, express HER2. So, but in the in clinic, so regardless, if you if if the pathologist find HER2 positive area in the cancer, they will be diagnosed as a HER2 positive. Then become the subject to the HER2 target therapy, right? Which is in this case would be um, the TDM1. However, so those heterogeneity and HER2 heterogeneity could be like 16 to 36 percent of HER2 in the HER2 positive breast cancer. So this concept actually is just coming in this few years. Uh, so the people now believe that in this field, this HER2 heterogeneity might, uh, you know, associated with a poor survival, drug resistance, and at least right here, right? So, um, so another, another, this HER2 heterogeneity um, and raised questions for us, you know, to want to know what happened in the HER2 positive breast cancers? You have a HER2 low expression. Those cells, those cancer cells, what's going on? They're still exposed to TDM1 in the environment, in tumor environment. What happened to those cells, right? So this is a few uh, slides. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, this issue, this problems. So again, so we took two different breast cancer cell lines. So those cell lines with 
a over expansion of EGF receptors, but with relatively low HER2 expression, as you can see from the Western plot. So that would be intentionally select uh, those HER2 low breast cancer cells. So when then we can expose to the TDM1, because those tumor cells are not very sensitive to TDM1 because they express a much lower level of HER2, right? So we begin with one is the 10, we have another dose about the A microgram per mil, and lower part of BT 549, we is to begin with a four microgram per mil. It's not those are, those are those escalate uh, those are those range are very different from for the positive breast cancer I show you initially. So after in a few months it becomes resistance. So those are cells, I'm sorry, the slides looks like a title slides is changed right here. So as you can see, there's a two uh, growth growth profiles. Um, so those are two tumor cell lines are not very sensitive to the TDMR treatment, but they were growing under this situation. Yeah, 10 mix per k per uh, 10 mix per k uh, per mil, and um, so another one is about five microgram per mil. However, something also still changed. So when we took those cells compared with the cells being exposed to the TDM1 after three months, we, uh, we uh, named that it as a resistant. But even the growth is not inhibited, right? We can see from here, the both cell lines shows the increased, uh, the, the, the invasion activity. So very interesting. So then the, the, we have another set of data that shows many different things with, uh, that's associated, possibly associated with uh, in the molecules. In this slide, we particularly uh, show that in the alpha 5, uh, beta 1 integrin had a similar changes as compared with HER2 positive breast cancers, right? So um, the cell invasion activity um, is dramatically increased when you're locking down beta 1. So, you know, so uh, what does that tell us? So beta 1 integrin, regardless in the HER2 positive, or her to no breast cancer cells, they're all involved in the cancer metastasis or cell invasion, looks like, based on our um, cell, cell biological studies. So this is slide to show you that I bring in another a player, which is MRP1. So that's usually multiple drug proteins, they're gonna pump out the drug as, as far as the Pfizer, they, they had a uh, study has shown that is that when cells become resistant to TDM1, likely the molecules are upregulated, pump out small molecules outside of the cells. But in our case, we also find that, you know, on TDM1 resistant cells. So there's MRP1 also upregulated. Again, once again, EGFR also uh, increased it. And HER2 even know in those cell lines, but also uh, dramatically reduced. So this slide shows that so when, when we have a use another molecules, so there are many, some differences between HER2 positive or HER2 low different cell lines, uh, HER2 low cell lines. But in this case, we find that the MRP1 upregulated. So then we have a question about, if we inhibit MRP1, so what happened to the tumor cells, right? Because this looks like they play the role to, to pump out the small molecules out to outside our tumors. If this um, upregulated, that looks like, I mean, they could become resistant because your small molecule being pumped out, it will not bind to microtubules. However, so our data shows that when we use a MRP1, a inhibitor called rever reversing. So this doesn't reversing. Unfortunately, it's not a reduce a invasion activity, as you can see our slides because it's downregulated alpha V, uh, alpha, uh, alpha 5 integrins. So there's downregulated alpha 5 integrins that can bring up alpha V integrins, right? So they are not showing right here. So, um, so um, in the middle panel, we show that MMP, the molecules, also uh, heavily involved in the cancer metastasis. So MMP activity is upregulated. So when you inhibit the, the tumors, but this case, interestingly, when you inhibit the EGFR molecules, so that's where, 
So uh, if you're interested, you can, uh, uh, I don't have too much time to explain this mechanism right here. So you can read our paper recently published in the uh, scientific reports. So the last area, uh, the right panel shows that if we inhibit on um, reversing uh, or MMP1, I'm sorry, the MMP1, so the reversing induced cell invasion activity is also dramatically reduced. So inclusion for the heterogeneity studies, the TDM1 is unable to inhibit the growth of breast cancer cells with a HER2 low expression, right? But, the HER2, but TDM1 promotes cell invasion activity of breast cancer cells expressing low levels of HER2, suggesting that TDM1 treatment could potentially increase metastatic potential of cells that express relatively low level of HER2 in HER2 positive breast cancer. So what that means is it's, I think it's going to be very important. I think the clinician also very interested because so usually TDM1 is a single molecule, right? It's not combined with other molecules to treat because the toxicity issues. However, if you treat those cells or cancer, HER2 positive cancers, if the cancer has a HER2 heterogeneity with HER2 low expression tumor cells it combined with a HER2 positive breast cancers, breast cancer cells. So it could potentially as a very risk. So based on this study, we suggest that. So some other drugs might need to be combined with the TDM1 so that can inhibit a cancer metastasis. So that's going to be very important. Based on our study, a single dose or only target HER2 is not going to be eliminated or increase, inhibit a cancer, uh, breast cancer growth if the cancer, the HER2 part of cancer shows heterogeneity in the HER2 expression. So last point is that the concept of drug resistance is not only limited to the resistance to growth inhibition by drug. We can show that already, right? When cancer cells are exposed to the TDM1, if the lower expression was HER2, the still change in other cellular behavior, for example, cell, cell invasion. So in this case, um, we, we're gonna have to be, this concept of drug resistance, not a, just a field that was just a limited to the growth, other cell behaviors also need to be um, considered. So the, this is the, um, our group on um, this work. Uh, mainly um, contributed by uh, Dr. Uh, Yuki Nori uh, and uh, Dr. Yuki Nori Endo, um, who is a staff science in my laboratory. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm happy to answer any questions.